Join Bob Shots Travels as we head to Cabarete in the Dominican Republic. Hi, I'm Bob, and you're watching Bob Shots Travels. We're here in Cabarete on the beautiful north coast of the Dominican Republic. We'll check out the place, including nearby spots like Kite Beach, and Quintro Beach, and Sasua. Come join us for an exciting time in Cabarete. I know you're going to like it. Big crowds in the ATL catching our 6 a.m. flight. We connected in Miami on American and headed to Puerto Plata in the Dominican Republic on the north coast, far from Punicana. We had prearranged a driver for our trip. After a short drive along the coast, we arrived at our condo in Cabarete, a two bedroom in Sea Star Condos, a welcoming spot, a well appointed condo with a fantastic view of the ocean. Great bang for your buck, under 150 US a night. It's time to check out Cabarete. Let's get a view of the area from our condo on the east end of Cabarete. A short walk from the main beach. Looking to your right, you can see Cabarete Beach. Let's head that way now. Along Cabarete Bay, condos, hotels, and private homes line both ends of the bay with a strip of restaurants in the middle along the beach. Cabarete is most famous for its excellent kite surfing, made possible by its year-round winds, making it great for all sorts of wind sports. The beach is lined with many bars and restaurants where you can put your toes in the sand, have a tasty cocktail, and a good meal, all at pretty reasonable prices. It's a big part of Cabarete's charm. Most places have a happy hour with two-for-one mojitos and other drinks somewhere between 4 and 8 p.m. with two drinks for something like 6 or $7. You can catch the sunset while you're enjoying a drink in the sand. The food's good too, and there are plenty of restaurant options. Just walk along the strip and check the menus out. Pick a place that catches your eye and enjoy the evening. We'll show you some favorites in a bit. Full moon was shining as we head back to our condo. Good night, Cabarete. Let's get an overview of the area. On the far left is the airport at Puerto Plata. You can also fly into Santiago, which is a bit farther. On the far right to the east is Cabarete, our main destination, a 30 minute taxi ride from the airport. Close to the airport is Sasua, Cabarete's larger and more lively neighbor. We'll check out Sasua in a bit. Nearby Cabarete is Kite Beach, the hub of kiteboarding in the area. Continuing west, you'll find the surfing spot in Quintro Beach. Jump in with us and check out all the Cabarete area has to offer. We get up the next morning and get some coffee at nearby Brazil Cafe. We enjoyed our cafe con leche from our balcony. Our pool was shared with the three condos, but we had plenty of space to ourselves. We spent some time at the pool overlooking the ocean before we headed to Voivoy for lunch on the beach. A great spot where we return frequently. Be sure to bring cash. After some time back at the condo, we headed back to Cabarete Beach for some dinner and met our son, Miles. Many of the places on the beach had live music on different nights, including Kahuna, another spot we frequented. We headed back to Voivoy for some more live music, including reggae. Good friends we had, oh good friends we've lost. Now let's go for a walk from our condo to Kite Beach. We'll do this mostly on the beach, so you can really get a feel for Cabarete. We headed up the alley to the main road, which follows the coast and is the primary way to get around. Hop on the back of one of these moto taxis. A cheap way to get where you're going. Janet's is the main supermarket, and a great place to fill up with groceries. You see these fruit stands all over the place. They offer local fruit at reasonable prices. We walk through Alternate Infinity, a nicely appointed bar and restaurant where we spent a lot of time with great views right along the water. A nicer place at the east end of Cabarete Bay. The first section of the beach is mostly condos and hotels before you hit the restaurants and bars. Rent some chairs and umbrellas for a nominal fee. Enjoy beachside service. You can take all kinds of lessons including wing foiling and windsurfing. And of course kiteboarding. This is where they hold the DR Open, a professional kite surfing contest. We'll see some more of that later. Kiteboard instructors help out their rookie customers by bringing their kites back up the beach. This point represents the end of Kite Beach. That's my wife Linda joining me on the walk. 
We've arrived at Kite Club. We met our son to watch him do some kiteboarding. Hang out at Kite Club. Enjoy a meal and a cerveza presidente with the other Kite Club residents. It was a full crowd scene in the water. Some of the guys were pulling off incredible tricks. Our son Miles gets ready to go. Here he is with his instructor Vico. After taking a couple weeks of lessons, he's up and at it. Apparently the hard part is not the boarding part, but learning to fly the kite. To get yourself going, you have to dip your kite down towards the water. Learning to turn around and come back upwind is key. We spent the next morning heading to the Cabarete Caves. You can walk to them from the beach. Here we are at Cuevas de Cabarete, starting with the Cave of the Frogs, where you can join into the fun. I had to give it a try too. The caves once were owned by Jungle John Dietrich, a former Green Bay Packer, who made them into a tourist destination with a restaurant and nightclub. They use this area for fake rituals for the tourists. Queen Linda takes the throne. Let's head down to the deepest part of the caves. It feels slightly sketchy, but all was good. You can swim in the water at the bottom. Miles is a cave diver, so he got right in. You can actually go diving in this cave if you have the right gear and setup. The last cave we visited was the Crystal Cave. Once you get inside the cave, you see it's filled with stalactites and stalagmites. Formed from water dripping through the limestone for thousands of years. The stalactites are actually hollow. We did have a furry friend join us. Overall, we enjoyed the experience. It was worth the $20 per person. There were a bunch of cool murals along the roads to the cave. Miles with his people. Unfortunately, some areas had a lot of trash. Swimming wasn't recommended in the open ocean by our place due to the strong riptides. And although I was tempted, I didn't see anybody try it while we were there. As an alternative, the reef near the shore created a natural pool. Coming in for a landing with my drone. We took a day and headed to Sasua, a 20 minute taxi ride. Passing the horses of Seahorse Ranch. We're now in Sasua. You can see the bay in the middle. Beautiful Sasua Beach. It's lined with a canopy of trees with restaurants and shops in the shade. We really like this artist's work. It was cool to see him painting. They even had convenient directions to Atlanta. We had to try these in the pineapple pina coladas at El Valero restaurant. Pina is pineapple in Spanish. They were awesome, along with the ceviche. It was definitely a beautiful spot to spend the day and a nice change of pace from Cabarete. There are plenty of places to eat and drink, and a lot of shops as well. We rented some chairs and umbrellas on the beach. I think it was 600 pesos, so about $12. The disco bathroom was quite a surprise. There's a view of Isabel de Torres, a mountain overlooking Puerto Plata. You can take the cable car to the top. The Tourist Protection Police. The National Police were there as well. The area of Sasua, just off the beach, is where the bars are typically hopping. It was Good Friday when we were there, so it was a lot more mellow than usual. We headed over to Playa Alicia, a nearby beach that's only formed in the last 20 years. We spent some time relaxing at the very nice waterfront Playa Alicia. Sasua is founded by Jews fleeing Nazi Germany, and the Star of David is still in the town side. Goodbye, Sasua. We enjoyed the visit. Let's head out for a walk around Cabaretto and check out some things around town. Traditional statues in front of a resort. Another Frutera. The DR is the world's largest producer of bananas. This is the cutest street in town. We'll eat some French fruit here later. Lots of local art for sale. Let's head down to the beach for the DR Open. Check it out.
These guys were getting incredible air and pulling off some impressive tricks. Using a shore break as a ramp. It was an impressive display of skill and athleticism. I'll never be returning. My son and I caught some live music at Cheers. As you might guess from the look on his face, he's not a big fan of being on camera. It took me a few minutes to get my drone up in the air, but I caught the tail end of a beautiful sunset over Cabarete. Let's head back around the point to Cabarete proper. While there are places to eat that aren't on the beach, it takes a lot to beat out eating with your toes in the sand. We took our nightly beach walk to the center part of town. Stuck around St. Petersburg When I knew it was time for a change young musician with a trumpet was super talented. I wouldn't call her Salty, but I do call her Linda. Calypso was another good spot for dinner or lunch. In a nice setting. Hanging out on the beach in front of our condo. You'd always meet at Mojitos before picking a spot for the rest of the night. Cheers was another staple with live music on multiple nights. There's a fair amount of retired expats from Canada and the U.S. in the area. Back on our favorite street, the French restaurant Le Bistro was an excellent option for authentic French food, including this duck confit. The next morning, we took a motoconcho to nearby Encuentro Beach, home of surfing's Cabaret de Pro best spot for consistent surf in the area. We caught these two guys in the water and got some great pics. Make sure you know the cost of a moto taxi as their driver tried to rip us off. Pretty sure my willingness to pay more than the normal price was what made him think I was a mark. Let's check out some shots of surfing. My son took at the WSL Pro here on Encuentro Beach a few weeks back. Cabarete is also famous for Master of the Ocean, a five-sport competition across kiteboarding, windsurfing, and others. Of course, including surfing, right here in Equentro Beach. After some time on the beach, we enjoyed a meal of coconuts before a taxi ride home. Nearby the Millennium Resort was one of our most frequent stops, La Fabrica de Gelato on Google Maps, but Severio's Gelato on the sign. A great spot for a quality gelato. The food park towards the middle of town was another great option. They had multiple food trucks with tasty food options at reasonable prices. It's near the Shell gas station. We picked two tables in the middle for seating. And then a full bar at the other end. We found a great spot for a change of pace. Marin Brasa had karaoke, and we got drinks at La Casita next door. I highly recommend their coconut mojitos. My son was lucky enough to be in town for carnival. We got these great shots. <laughs> Different area groups put on their shows. What's the 
There's lots of beach dogs, but this guy was by far our favorite. He had a chill personality in his two perfectly round circles. He didn't look like a pair of dice. We headed over to Ula, starting out with drinks outside. It's a bit more of a nightclub. When it started to rain, we came inside. Oh no, he started to get funky. As cool as everyone thought they were, no one was cool as the dance floor dog. Once the clock struck midnight on Good Friday, Lent was over, and the Dominicans came out in force to play. My son ran to Moto Concha that night. The place was a madhouse as this is a big holiday for the Dominicans. Semana Santa, or Holy Week. The next day there was a big festival with a concert, beach volleyball, and other events. With way more people than we saw any other time. Beach volleyball has played three on three here, and it's been a recurring part of this festival. The concert went on all day. Sponsored by Presidente. That large condo building you see going up behind them has condos starting at $800,000. Very expensive compared to the typical prices of the area. That night we had dinner at one of our favorite spots, Ultra Infinity. My wife loved her curry chicken. We enjoyed our meals under the palms. It really is a beautiful and relaxing spot to have dinner. Right on the water with a great view of Cabarete Bay. Heading through the gate to the backyard of our condo. The pool overlooked the ocean and the palm trees were divine. Let's head down to the beach. The reef made a nice pool for relaxing and swimming and an interesting up close view of nature. Coconut Bob makes another appearance. Time to let your troubles wash away. Last day in Cabarete, we are getting ready to take off to Atlanta via Miami. I uh, thought we would go down to the beach for one last chance to stick our toes in the water. My wife went over there, there you go. So Linda, what have you thought about Cabarete so far? Love it. I like to walk over the beaches, the food was good, people were nice. I like how the bars are right there on the beach and restaurants and they're all kind of together so you can pick a place and just walk out there and decide what you want. I like the kite surfing. Enjoyed that our son got to learn how to kite surf. Yeah, it was cool to watch the kite surfing. Some entertainment while you're hanging out. We check out our son's place before we head to the airport. Just across from Kite Beach, clearly geared towards kite boarders. It costs $1,100 a month. Let's go say goodbye to Kite Club. It's a cool spot with good food even if you aren't a kite boarder. Adios, cabarete. Click that Bob Shock button on the left and join us for more of our travels around the world. Thanks for subscribing.